Hi, I'm Dr. Peter Weyer. I'm the director of the Evidence-Based Medicine Teaching Tips uh, Project. And what you're about to see is a videotaped uh, representation of an interactive approach to teaching a, uh, a content uh, issue relevant to evidence-based practice. Uh, the participants here have not, never seen this before, and this is a, uh, a, a live, uh, interactive demonstration of how this tip characteristically works in practice. Okay. So what we're going to talk about uh, at this point is something called an adjusted or stratified analysis. And you'll see that almost always, hopefully, in observational studies and often in the context of randomized trials. So what we're going to do is now try to understand an adjusted analysis. All right. Let's say I do a randomized trial, and by bad luck, we know that randomization is designed to balance groups for prognostic factors so that treatment and control have a similar distribution of prognostic factors for the outcome of interest. But sometimes, by bad luck, randomization can fail to achieve its task of balancing groups with respect to prognostic factors for the outcome of interest. And I'm going to present a situation where the poor investigator has suffered from very bad luck. She did a randomized trial, but as it turns out, in the treatment group, 80%, 80 out of her 100 patients were young and 20 were old. In the control group, it had worked out very differently. 20 of her patients were young and 80 of them were old. Now, it turns out, treatment apparently worked. It reduced the risk of events. There are at least two explanations of this finding. What are two possible explanations of the apparent effectiveness of treatment? One is that the treatment actually worked. The other is that the young people um, do better because they're young, not because they were treated. Exactly. There's two possibilities. Treatment either works or because of what we call confounding, which is simply a maldistribution of prognostic factors in the treatment and control group. It wasn't the treatment at all. It was simply that the, tr the treatment group was prognostically better because it had more young people who tend to do better. Okay, right. Now, is there any way we can sort out those two possibilities? Of course, we'd love to know, did treatment really work? Or was it the problem of confounding and maldistribution of prognostic factors? Is there any way we can figure this out? Any ideas? Covariance yeah. analysis. Covariance analysis. Whoa! That's a big black word you're using here. Okay. So, absolutely right. Covariance analysis. But, in answering the question, you're forbidden to use any big words, okay? Can you tell me conceptually how we could solve this problem? You're just adjusting for the co-founder of young age. Yes, you could adjust, which is another way of co saying covariance analysis is a particular way of adjusting, except I told you, for me, even adjusting is a big word, okay? Right? Uh, no technical language. In answering this question, I want a conceptual approach to this problem. No technical language allowed. See if age and the treatment effect travel together. Ah, see if age and the treatment effect travel together. How am I going to? I'm going to look out the window. There's age in a car, and is, is treatment effect in the same car, or, or what? How am I going to do that? 
Yeah, you, 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 you so, um, uh, 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 so no technical language and no metaphors, okay? <laughs> okay, it's good, nice metaphor, it was a nice metaphor, but I want something more concrete, yes? Let me try, statistically you're going to, you're going to assess whether benefit was related to age, that is whether the young group, the young individuals in either group did better than the older group. So I tell you, the young did better than the old. That answer your question? Well, that would imply that, that there may be an issue with regards to the, uh, the, yes. treatment, group, the treatment group being prognostically better. Yes, there, there may case. be. But how are you going to definitively sort it out? No, no idea? What if you plotted age on one axis and treatment effect on the other axis and see what you got? Age and treatment effect. So now you're saying maybe the treatment effect is different in the young and old. Okay? But that's actually not the issue here. The issue is, is the apparent treatment effect explained by the age? No? Well, if you have enough, if you enroll enough uh, patients, you could only analyze just the young. Okay. So we could just take the young and analyze just the young people, okay? But what a shame. We have all these old people. Wouldn't we want to use their data too? Stratify. So, oh, stratify, yes, 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 but, uh, but that you're not allowed to say that word, okay? So tell me what you mean. You do young and you do old and then you look at test. Perfect. What we can, in fact, do is to take the young patients and compare how the young patients did in the treatment group to how the young patients did in the control group. And then we can take the old patients and in the treatment group and compare them to how the old patients did in the control group. We have only after doing this. Now I'm allowed to use metaphors, okay? We have leveled the playing field. We have, and I'm also now allowed to use technical language, we have unconfounded the comparison. So we're comparing like with like in the treatment group, and we are comparing like with like in the control group. All right? Now, I'm going to try and make this even more vivid. Uh, well, first, actually, before I do this, we could have diabetic and non-diabetic. And we could not only do it for age, but we could do it for diabetes. And that way we do the old diabetics, the young diabetics, the old non-diabetics, and the young non-diabetics. We'd have four prognostically homogeneous groups leveling the playing field, and once we have prognostically homogeneous groups, we can compare treatment and control. And if we had enough patients, we could do it for a third variable, whether they had hypertension or not, and then we'd have eight prognostically uniform groups. Okay? So, I will try now to make this even, hopefully it's, you're getting the idea, but I'll try to make it even more vivid by telling you, I'm going to use some numbers here. I'm going to give you the conditions and you're going to work out what happens. First of all, the true relative risk is 1.0. Treatment is useless, doesn't work. Young people have events, let's call them deaths, at a rate of 10%, a proportion of 0.1. The old people die at a rate of 40%, a proportion of 0.4. If those things are true, how many people, young people in the treatment group will die? Eight. 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 And how many old people in the treatment group will die? Everybody agree? Mm -hmm. All right. A total of 16. How many people, how many young people in the control group will die? 
too. How many old people in the control group will die? Higher arithmetic here. <laughs> How many of the 80 old people? 40% of 80. Four times eight is? 32. Excellent. Okay. So a total of 34. Okay. 34 people have died in the control group, 16 in the treatment group naively ignoring the imbalance in prognostic factors, the relative risk of dying in the treatment of, or the control group is a little less than 50%, right? Okay, so our relative risk reduction, 16 is a little less than half of 34, okay? So our relative risk reduction is a little bit greater than 50%. Great treatment. It reduces your risk of dying by a little bit more than 50%. Except, of course, we know it doesn't. Okay? So let's go back and take the young people. What is the young people's risk of dying in the treatment group? What is the young people's as a percentage? What is the risk of young people dying in the treatment group? In the young people in the treatment group, of the young people in the treatment group, what is their risk of dying? 10%. Okay. Of the young people in the control group, what is their risk of dying? What's the relative risk of dying in the treatment versus the control group among the young folks? One. In the old people, what is the risk of dying in the treatment group? In the old people, what is the risk of dying in the control group? Thank you. What is the relative risk of dying in the old people? One. So, once we have created prognostically homogeneous groups, we get at the truth, and we can then combine the relative risk in the young people and the relative risk in the old people to get an overall relative risk of 1.0. So, conceptually, this adjusted or stratified or covariance analyzed, if you will, result gives the truth. But in simple terms, it's because we have compared like with like. We have created prognostically homogeneous groups where if we had failed to do so and ignored the prognostic imbalance between treatment and control groups, we get a very misleading result. So the bottom line is that conceptually a stratified or adjusted analysis is simply creating prognostically homogeneous groups, comparing like with like, leveling the playing field, and then generating effect estimates in those prognostically similar groups, and thus giving an unconfounded comparison between treatment and control. Okay? Any questions? about uh, stratified or adjusted analysis. All right, we're okay.